You're listening to the Timey Wimey Tea Time Extras, a geeky antics.net experience. Where the lovely and amazing people who talk about Doctor Who every Saturday talk about anything. <laughs> Warning, the conversations in our extras may be NSWF. We're rating it MA for mature audiences only. This content may be unsuitable for children under 17. Tiny Wiley Tea Time Greetings and welcome to Timey Wimey Tea Time Hashtag TWTT This is a special episode This is our XTC series Episode 2 Or as I like to call it uh, Double zero two, zero zero two. And what that really means Is we're just going to do something We're going to break from the usual format I was going to keep this part of the regular show. It still will be on the main feeds on geekyantics.net, allgames.com, iTunes, Stitcher, uh, TuneIn Radio, all that good stuff. But um, it will be marked as uh, titled as an XTC because uh, I want to just kind of have more of a conversation with you guys. Just speak more from the heart, less of a script. And also, it's it's a big day today because uh, Stan, our beloved Stan Farina, is not with us today, and he may not be coming back. We'll see what happens there. He's uh, found another calling, and um, for a while he's been kind of teeter tottering. He didn't he doesn't see the benefit of podcasting. He doesn't see how it fits into his uh, schedule. See, it's, bother- it's bothering the dog too. That's why he's barking. But. Uh, <laughs> Rageinator, we're here on, on allgames.com, Rageinator is, is talking about his obsession with Steam. He ended up getting 19 games between yesterday and today. Man, I wish I had a kind of disposable income, but I don't. <laughs> That's the, what happens when you're a family man. Let me know how I sound on uh, all game stream, guys. And hello. So, for those new to the show, what is Time Wimey Tea Time? Well, it's where friends gather to... Talk about all things Doctor Who, sci-fi, fantasy, zombies, creative writing, and just about anything geeky. Uh, we tend to focus more on the creative processes, uh, philosophical kind of things, human issues, um, the stuff that really the fabric of the of the creative content that we enjoy. Because you know, even we even go into video games too, and and anime. There's so many things, that uh, so many common threads between all the things that we love. And we like to just talk about those kind of things. But we are primarily a Doctor Who podcast. Um, because I, I feel like Doctor Who, you know, 50 plus years of, of that series. Uh, I'm not even going to talk about the audio books and the novels and comics and all the expanded universe stuff. But just the TV series running 50 plus years. It's going to take a little bit of a break, so it's kind of cheating. But still, over 50 years of, of history there. And... The show is just so great at uh, making you think about human issues by using aliens, you know? Now, yeah, Star Trek has done that, Star Wars has done that, but Doctor Who was really the first. And, you know, you, you, may, you, may have, you may have never seen or you may not even know what Doctor Who is. So I'm going to tell you, Doctor Who is very special. Uh, it's had, it has a rich history. I mean, there's been so many great um, writers you know, writing for the show. Uh, classic Doctor Who, you just think about classic Doctor Who. Douglas Adams, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he wrote several episodes for Doctor Who, uh, classic Doctor Who. And who is Douglas Adams? Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I mean, the 40, number 42, that's, that's a big deal. Uh, and there's also Robert Holmes, who's, you know, credited as being probably the greatest uh, classic Doctor Who writer. Uh, modern Doctor Who, well, you know, it's, 
some people love Stephen Moffat. More people prefer uh, Russell T. Davies and some of the uh, lesser-known contributors. But uh, Doctor Who just is a rich series that takes us to so many different places and gets us just thinking about things from a different perspective. That's what I like about it. Um, it it's got aspects of an action, adventure, mystery. Uh, I mean, it's a space opera, but then it's not. It's just it's just fantastic. Doesn't mean it's not without its flaws, and we get into those flaws quite a bit. But nothing's perfect, and that's kind of something you have to really think about when you judge not only uh, creative works, but uh, you know human beings uh, or, or just other living creatures. Period. We all make mistakes. That's gonna be one of the things I think we'll talk about uh, today. Um, so that's some quick housekeeping. Now that we established what Doctor Who is and how I love it, I'm, I'm a fanboy when it comes to Doctor Who. It's one of the few things I really get excited about, uh, whether they're having great a great series, a good, great season or not. Uh, but a uh, little bit of housekeeping here. So we'll be doing some format changes. So those that have been listening to the show and have been on this journey with us from the beginning, uh, we're going to switch things up a lot. With Stan as a co-host, I did a lot of heavy um, show notes and... He liked to script a lot of things because he li- he liked to know what to expect going into the show and how to respond. And he's not very good with being put on the spot. And I get it; not everybody could could be um, just kind of uh, let it flow. Um, and and, and it, the benefit of that is we say some really intelligent things and avoid uh, the mouth garbage. Cause mouth garbage is real, and we've talked about the mouth garbage quite a bit. We're probably gonna talk about it more today. But uh, there's gonna be format changes. Um, I think I'm gonna lean more towards a shorter show. Maybe skip the little musical intermission we have in the middle. I'm gonna aim for an hour and a half. Uh, an hour, I just don't see it happening, unless I, I continue to keep doing the show by myself. So, uh, with that, it's probably just gonna be a matter of doing one, one or two f- very focused theme topic discussions per show, unless we're discussing, um, unless Doctor Who's running or The Walking Dead's running, which we talk a lot about both of those shows. Um, then we just uh, we'll pick a topic or go, pick a classic Doctor Who episode and talk about that. So it'll be it'll be a lot more focused, and you'll see it reflected in the titles of the of the episodes. It'll be less arbitrary. Um, so it'll be more about a specific specific theme rather than several themes. I think that'll be good. And of course, it doesn't mean that we'll you know talk about a, a topic and then put it away and never re- revisit it. We'll see, especially in Doctor Who, there are topics that. You know, underlying themes, recurring themes that keep coming back. Dean Blue Guy says, how do I stop spending money? This is probably not the show for that. <laughs> but I think the best way to stop spending money is to think about all the, th- all the times you spent a little bit of money and how much, you know, how many times you regretted it and then how much money you'd have to spend on something even better if you didn't do that. So you kind of try to establish a budget or a savings habit. Maybe one less cup of a Starbucks a day or a week, you know, that or eating out less. Those things can save you lots of money. But we're not a financial show. We're not a, a self-help show. Well, eh, you know, in a way, we, we do get into that personal development thing because in tackling human issues, you know, I mean, I mean like, I said, like I said, we get into the philosophy, the mythology, um, all kind of aspects, even spirituality of uh, creative works. I think in in talking about that from a creative perspective, you know, from the perspective of a writer, blogger, uh, streamer, video producer, and all that stuff, podcaster, uh, you know, all all that stuff. I've done a lot of ghostwriting too. That's uh, part of how I pay the bills. But in doing that, in tackling those issues, I think we end up, learning more about ourselves and really getting to the core of what those issues mean and why they're so important. So there is a little bit of a personal development uh, aspect here. So thank you for that. <laughs> Ranging and says, uh, best way to stop spending money is by not having any. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's one way to do it. Yeah. If, I can't spend the money if I spent it. Ha ha. Yeah. Don't, don't travel with money in your pocket. There you go. Hashtag real talk. Um... So we are looking for co-hosts. If you are new to podcasting and always wanted to do podcasting, hey, I'm, I'm willing to take on an understudy and show you the ropes and everything on the technical side and 
uh, the more creative side as well. That'd be awesome. And if you're passionate about the kind of topics we've talked about, then by all means, let me know. And you can see our entire podcast feed at uh, geekyantics.net for slash podcast. That's our exclusive shows. And there's, there's a couple in there that are syndicated shows, meaning there's shows that, um, that are not exclusive or part of the Geeky Ants Network per se, but we syndicate them out of love to help them grow their audience. Um, you know, and uh, yeah, it's good stuff. And of course, we are on allgames.com. If you want to listen to the audio only feed, definitely visit us at allgames.com. We're here every Saturday at uh, 12 p.m., that's 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, uh, and that's uh, 5 p.m. in London. And I believe 7 p.m. in Bucharest, something like that. Uh, and I also believe that might be 4 p.m. in Madrid. If I'm not mistaken, geography not my str- one of my strong suits. So, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> what? Ray J says, "Wait, you pay to eat out? Who's charging you to eat them?" Oh, I'm back on that. Hey, this is a family-friendly show. <laughs> and I'm not into cannibalism. That's just weird. For that, if you can go to Walking Dead. But uh, yeah, we do keep this show pretty clean. Uh, and actually, that's a good segue. Thank you for that. If you listen to Geeky Antic shows, uh, one thing I will say is our most family friendly shows are our Time Wimey Tea Time. Uh, I know we had the bumpers that it might be. Uh, inappropriate content because XTC is where we tend to have guests and go off the rails more. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna behave myself today. But generally, time when we tea time, and then we on Sunday we have uh, our spiritual show. It's not for everyone, but we have a, an apostolic outlook at 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, it's a whole different kind of thing. It's, that that's as clean and uh, good as it gets. But other than that. Um, you know, we most of our shows uh, air at night, uh, late night, prime time kind of s- stuff. So you know, the freaks come out at night. That's kind of the theme we go for there. So at night, we just kind of let it flow and don't worry so much about the filter. Because that's one thing. Like uh, when you when you're podcasting or or doing any creative work, like like comedy, for example, if you got to walk on eggshells, it takes the fun out of it. Um, and we'll get into that discussion. Uh, I have I have some personal thoughts about about the nature that I do believe that it's important to be courteous and mindful of your audience. But you know, a network can't possibly police all of their shows and their hosts. So I mean, all games is the same way. All, AllGames.com they have some shows where everybody keeps it clean, and they have shows where it's like it's almost porn level discussion. It's like whoa, okay. All right, slow down there, guy. But I think each show, each host has a responsibility to develop that expectation. And it's kind of assumed in a network that the individual contributors, no single contributor speaks for the whole. And it doesn't speak for every other contributor or show or creative work, whatever it might be. So... That's just a little quick disclaimer. If you happen to listen to one of our other shows and you hear something that offends you, take it with a grain of salt. And definitely go come to this show and and, and air it out because it's a separate, whole separate thing. Yeah, we're on the same network. You know, I might even be involved with some of the other shows, but it doesn't mean that they're connected. And you know what? I think it's important to give people the benefit of the doubt. But anyway, back to housekeeping. Uh, We are still thinking about doing the radio drama. That might be, um, it's definitely going to be a 2015 thing, but it's going to probably be further ahead. Um, I know I, I talked to Ali Kennedy, Alistair Kennedy. Uh, we were doing our podcast yes, last night, uh, Friday, December 12th at 7 p.m. Eastern. And, every, and we, um, every Friday we do Star Wars Rebels Cast UK. And uh, we had a wonderful discussion yesterday. We had a, a nice conversation with... Uh, I don't want to call it interview. It's a nice conversation with John Jackson Miller. And he talked about his book, A New Dawn, and his other book, actually, as well, uh, Kenobi. But we mainly focused on A New Dawn. Great Star Wars discussion. We talked about Mass Effect, collectible card games, uh, Star Trek, uh, his original story, uh, Overdraft. 
uh, so many great things there. Oh, it was such a great discussion. Um, so stay tuned. That's gonna come up. We're gonna I'm gonna upload that to our YouTube. It's on our Twitch, and it'll be up on all the podcast feeds as well ASAP. But um, yeah, we've been talking about doing a radio drama. Uh, we're kind of tinkering with the idea of doing a Star Wars fan fiction type thing. Um, but then we also would like to do some original content. Um, so that will be on the Star Wars Rebels Cast UK if it is Star Wars themed. And for original stuff, it'll be here because this is, you know, this is kind of like the writer's panel slash uh, creative mastermind uh, round table place. But it's casual too. That's why it's tea time. You bring you a drink of choice, relax, kick back, and just talk about whatever's on your mind. And we hope that we've created an environment in our, you know, we're, we're still a fledgling cap uh, podcast, but we hope that we've created a a nice, welcoming kind of environment for people to just feel like they can speak uh, openly. Oh, you know, I do need to actually change this. I just realized I have this marked as episode 15. This is not episode 15. This is actually XTC 002. Yes, so that's, a, that's important. Episode 15 will be next week. And like I said, I, I, just, I made that judgment call because I wanted to just have more of a conversation with you guys and not uh, be bogged down by a four-man specific uh, talking points. But we will have, we'll be having a uh, format change anyway. So, yeah. All right, some more housekeeping stuff here. Uh, so we talked about the Soft Kitty contest. Uh, we're going to give away three Hearthstone pillows. That was Stan Farina's uh, baby, and he was doing it through the Geeky Antics Network and through TWTT. But since he, it seems he will be MIA henceforth, uh, that may be canceled. So I do greatly apologize for that. Uh, I don't want anybody flaming him, but things happen. And there haven't really been that much that many submissions, and uh, I don't know, I've, I'm going to try to think of a way that I can make it up to the people that have submitted um, their song requests, their their interpretation of Soft Kitty. I know a lot of it seems like a lot of you just did it for fun because uh, actually pretty pretty much, pretty much everyone did, submitted those uh, songs and didn't even say who they were, so there was no real identifying information. Um, so. More details on that will be coming uh, on the show right here, or on, and or on geekyantics.net. So stay tuned for that. We have a, a giveaway section there, which covers all our contests, sweepstakes, sweepstakes, and giveaways. Which there is a distinction with those things. That's important. And all right, I think that actually covers all the, you know, housekeeping items. Oop, what I do? I'm gonna broke something. Bing. Yeah. So now let's go on to what we'll be talking about today, the meat and potatoes of the show. Uh, now that we're 20 minutes in, um, we're going we're to revisit Spearhead from Space. Because I feel that we, didn't, we did not give that classic Doctor Who episode enough of a real look. Um, and actually, in listening to two great podcasts, uh, Doctor Who Companion uh, on Stitcher and Next Stop Everywhere... Shout out to you guys. Uh, it inspired me to really come back to some ish, some of the observations I've made, and um, you know some of the real important nuggets there. And I think it, it, it's worth giving the third Doctor John Pertwee more love before we move on to uh, Davison and Sylvester McCoy and um, Colin Baker. Not in that order, obviously, but. Uh, we did already cover in the previous episode, episode 14 of Time and Wami Tea Time, we did cover um, Peter Davison's uh, Earthshock. And we started talk getting into how uh, Tom Baker was the better doctor and possibly, arguably, the greatest doctor of all time. But Davison did have amazing stories to work with, which I think carried him as an actor. Um, in contrast, um, you could say Peter Capaldi hasn't had a very good stories to work with, but he's done a great job, you know, playing the role with 
what limited material he had to work with. And I, I, I would argue that that's true and that's fair. Some may not. But uh, we'll talk about Spearhead from Space. Um, maybe talk a little bit more about these podcasts I just shouted out. And good places you can go to get your um, your fix, your Doctor Who fix. Um, give us a few of them that I like. And they all have... Uh, I'm writing them down before I forget them. <laughs> they all have their own different kind of takes on everything. Um, and this, this podcast, like the Who Storian... Uh, Mark Who 42 I believe his name is he has his own thing and as many as there are they never get old because everybody has a completely different take on it we say a lot of the same things but there's also a lot of different topics there too so so yeah when we visit Spearhead from Space we'll talk uh, a little bit about Doctor Who podcast you can check out Uh, that'll probably be in our closing section in our shout outs and we'll revisit the 12th Doctor and really think about what's important with him and why he could, why arguably he was such a jerk. Because people think he's kind of, I don't know, antisocial, maybe a, a sociopath. We'll talk about that. But um, let's talk about Spirit from Space here. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta ignore uh, IRC right now because they're having some really off-color discussions there. But thanks for tuning in, guys, uh, on the AllGames.com feed. <laughs> Whew, it's getting a little, little crazy in there, a little cray cray. Let's see who's here on Twitch. I see some lurkers, but my viewer list is not updated, so I apologize. So anyway, Spear from Space. So Spear from Space was the first. Um, First third Doctor episode, um, and the third Doctor was played by John Pertwee. So that's that's already important. It's his first episode. It's considered one of the, the classics. So it's on the F- Doctor Who 50th anniversary collection, and a lot of things, a lot of big milestones for the series took place here. And uh, we're gonna get into, we're definitely gonna get into that. It was the all right. Actually, let's just do it right now. It was the first color Doctor Who, so that's a big deal. But more importantly, uh, and some, a lot of folks mentioned this, including the folks over at the Next Stop Everywhere podcast. It, it uh, apparently Stephen Moffat has said this as well that Spearhead from Space was almost like a pilot for a brand new series, and I totally see that. Um, it felt like. They really went all out to explain who the Doctor was, make it a, make a point of the fact that he's an alien, but he's humanoid, and he has human emotions, and he loves humans, and human culture, and he loves Earth. Uh, and, and a lot of backstory uh, is, is given here, a lot of callbacks to um, the uh, second Doctor, Patrick Troughton, because um, it's actually interesting... Um, unit is a big thing. Uh, what does unit stand for? I forget now. But unit's like uh, United, uh, United Nations investigative team or something like that. Uh, they were basically like the X Files department before that show was ever even a thing. The Men in Black, so to speak, but more of a militarized, uh, militarized slash scientific division, like sh- maybe Shield. I, I'd compare it to S.H.I.E.L.D., which I happen to like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And that, that show is very divisive. Uh, just like Doctor Who. You either love it or hate it, I guess. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, um, the Brigadier is introduced, uh, reintroduced. And the, the Brigadier did first meet the Doctor as the second regeneration, uh, the Pat- Patrick Trotton era, which I'm, I, I'm still not a huge fan of, but I've got I've warmed up to him with his silly recorder or flute, whatever you want to call it, uh, looking like Mo with that crazy bowl cut. I don't know what's going on there, but uh, the Brigadier first met the Doctor in Web of Fear, which is another you know milestone episode, which I actually need to see. I'm very curious about how that all started off. There's so much history there, and um, the Brigadier went on to leave in uh, Series 8, though you can't really count Series 8 because the Brigadier comes back as 
spoiler, a Cyberman. The last time we see the Brigadier as a human being is actually on the Sarah Jane Chronicles. So, it, you know, the, even though Doctor Who has uh, switched so many hands and there's so many people, you know, so many cooks with their hands in the pot, they've done such a great job of making it a mostly seamless universe, and I love that. And I think every writer that's been involved with it feels a responsibility to keep the legacy going and tipping their hat to the previous writers and, and showrunners and bringing back old villains, old locations, and tying everything together. But at the same time, leaving it open enough that people could write good standalone stories and not feel like they're a slave to that universe. It was such a massive universe. I mean, when you have time travel and space travel combined, yeah, you could write about anything and make it fit somehow. But it's great that they, they for the most part, they're very good about not contradicting rules and, and events that took place in the past. Now, arguably, you could say with time travel, it's a lazy, you know, arguably lazy uh, narrative device because you can basically retcon whatever you want. You know, retroactive, uh, what's it, retcon, I forget what it actually stands for, retroactive conditioning. Basically, just, you know, change up what you wrote before uh, and, and retroactively just go back and say, you know, that, that, that actually wasn't true. That was all a, a dream. Or actually, they went back in time and, and changed that event, so it never happened, you know. And then there's a the whole thing about paradoxes of trying to have time travel and all that stuff. But anyway, back to Spirit from Space. I'm not gonna. I'm trying to minimize the uh, the banter. The Spirit from Space also introduced a new villain, a new race, the Autons. And I actually almost forgot about this until it was pointed out. The Autons were seen again four episodes later. In episode 5 with uh, John Pertwee, which was, I believe, Terror of the Autons. And then in 2005, when the series came back from a bit of a hiatus, in the episode Rose. Which, if I, if I am not mistaken, that was the last time we saw Rose Tyler. And I think that was the last, also, Christopher Eccleston, Chris Eccleston uh, episode. No, no, no. No, no, no. It was the last Chris Eccles. I think it was during during uh, Tenant, because Tenant had a, a run with Rose. Yeah. See, I gotta go back and revisit those episodes. So the Autons, while are not the flashiest of villains, right? It's cool that they, they brought those back, and I think they need to do more of that. There's been so many throwaway uh, species and villains and whatnot, and I feel like the modern series relies way too much on Daleks and Cybermen and I love that I love the fanfare but I don't love the fact that they keep using them it's, let us miss them a little bit and, and make those encounters worthwhile not just using because you know you feel like well the story is weak but we'll throw some Daleks and Cybermen in there it'll be fine no don't do that come on there's been so many other adversaries just throw them in instead so what else do we see uh, another thing that, that was uh, interesting in, in Spirit from Space, it wasn't so much of a series changer or a series milestone, but within the era of the Third Doctor, the era of John Pertwee, we, that they did their own kind of Ghostbusters type thing before Ghostbusters was even a thing. And uh, they did a whole reverse polar the polarity bit. And if I recall, it was uh, the Doctor's big thing was we'll reverse the polarity of the neutron flow, or we'll reverse the polarity of the neutron panel, and that kind of became the catchphrase. And I guess you could say the Deus Ex Machina, or Machina, rather that's the proper way to say it. De Deus Ex Machina, Machina, la Machina está bien buena. Ha <laughs> ha. I, I don't. I actually speak proper Spanish. I'm just being silly. Me gusta. Anywho. <laughs> I am bilingual, folks. I'm just being a little bit of a derp. But, uh, yeah, that became, the, that became the Third Doctor's kind of shtick, you know? And it, it was his kind of sonic screwdriver. Another interesting thing is that uh, the Third Doctor didn't really use the sonic screwdriver. Uh, he barely used it. Very interesting because modern Doctor, the modern Doctor, uh, the sonic screwdriver seems to fix everything. It's like the solution for everything. Um, and here it's kind of like, oh yeah, you know, I do have this thing, don't I? Uh, <laughs> Deckard C in the house, he says, La perro tengo en la mano. <laughs> it's funnier when he says it too. 
किसी 